Hey, it's Doodlebud. Why do I have all these pens though? What are we going over today? Well, it turns out I just discovered that I look at pens a little different than the average person. Yes, when I pick up a brand new pen, I look at it too and go, oh, that looks cool. And you feel it and you appreciate it and all that sort of stuff. But that lasts, uh, I don't know, maybe five or 10 seconds before then immediately I start inspecting and thinking about how this was made, what it's made out of, what did they do right? What did they do wrong? Uh, that is how my brain works and this camera doesn't like the focus, but I'm going to go over that stuff today and give you a little insight. There's about kind of five categories they go through mentally when I try to deconstruct and reconstruct a pen and evaluate it to think, is this a good pen or isn't? Now, look, I understand for a lot of folks and really me too, the number one thing that we all really care about is how does it write? You know, is it nice and smooth? Is the wetness good? Is it scratchy? Is it nicely tuned? Is it a nice line? All that stuff can it keep up. I, I couldn't agree with you anymore. That is paramount. But something I want to tell you, it's easier to fix that. Case and point, this pen, mega expensive pen. I love the design, everything, but someone screwed up the nib and uh, they were willing to part with this pen for $20. But if you want to watch my video, I fixed it and it wasn't that bad. And now the pen operates perfectly. So that is actually a relatively easy fix is fixing a nib. There are some pens that no matter what you do, they're just bad, right? Like construction, assembly, uh, threads, all these different things that matter that you could have a beautiful writing nib, but the pen is just God awful. So let's go through those things right now. So the first place I'm gonna start is at the very top of the pen with the cap. It's got two functions. One, protect the nib. You gotta protect these things, gold, steel, titanium, whatever it's made out of. Uh, you know, you don't want to get knocked about and out of alignment or bent. So great. As long as you got something on there, it's protected. That's very easy to accomplish. The next thing we have to accomplish is we have to seal it. You don't want the ink to dry up. It's water-based ink. If it's not sealed, it'll evaporate and clog up your nib. Then you pop the cap off, put it down, go to write, and it just doesn't write. And that's extremely frustrating. So how do we fix that? So one of the easy ways to do it is you have a step down in the cap, as you can see on this uh, Peter Draw Narwhal version. There we go. You can see that little step down there. That goes against the end of the section. It does two functions. It, it protects the threads so you don't over tighten. It's going to stop on that. So even if you try to tighten more, you're not ripping up those threads. You're not mashing them up. What it also does is it seals the nib. That's a very, very common way to do it on a threaded pen. You know, this is the uh, Gravitas Sentry. He does it on here too. Even though it's metal, he does a great job the way it's designed, so it seals the pen. So very simple to do. Another way to do it with a threaded cap is along this edge here. Um, it's not the perfect way to do it. You got to be a little mindful. It's it's you got to watch out. It's easier to kind of get little chips and stuff and and potentially damage that. You could still get it up here if you sealed in there, but um, if you can rely on the threads or just this one, but it is a little more favorable to have a step. But if you do a good job you know, it, you won't have any problems. However, if it's just not done quite right, similar kind of so concept here, but with my Montegrappa Elmo, I absolutely love this pen. Um, it is notorious for drying up and I don't want to have to put silicone grease on here or plumber's tape or all this elaborate stuff. It should just be taken care of. It's an easy problem to fix, um, but they, you know, it got missed on here. So I have a different ink, this uh, Infinity ink, and that helps out. This has been capped for uh you know maybe three weeks haven't used it and it writes up right away normally it would be three days but so that's one way not to do it common way to do it on a slip cap or snap cap is to have an inner cap liner here that floats inside like you can see on this platinum you can see it there it's on a little spring so when this comes up this is going to there's a little tiny taper which is nice too but it goes going to go inside of that cap liner and let's see if we can see it move here. Oh, the focus. Okay, not too bad. So watch the cap liner, it will move up. You can see it moving up, so it's gonna have that spring action, and now you have a nice little seal. Lamy 2000 is a really nice slip cap mechanism, and inside of there, there is a cap liner in there too, and it's also just a bit of a taper kind of friction fit, so there's no springy part that's sliding up and down. It relies on a really nice fit that's gonna go around here. That cap liner has to be able to have some uh, movement to it, a little deformation. And so it can go against the section there and seal up nicely. So a friction fit or a nice little cap liner. And on this Visconti, they combined sort of both of them. So we got the inner cap liner that's floating. And then we also have a twist 
not just a slip cap, but sort of a combo of both, does the same thing. So if a pen doesn't do a good job of sealing up and doing that, it's it's going to be a frustrating pen. Can have the best writing experience and look beautiful, but if it doesn't seal properly, ugh. the next category is a huge one, and that is materials. There is simply no way I'd be able to cover all of this. Would be a topic for like an hour just on pen materials. But let's touch on a few that are available and why you might pick one over another. So right out of the gate, material is going to dictate the overall weight. Do you want a pen that's going to be nice and light or do you want something that's going to be a serious heavy hitter? So that's going to be part of the plastic or metal debate. Let's say you decide on a pen that's not going to be too heavy and you want to go with plastic. Well, now with the plastic, you got to decide, well, what, uh, you know, machining or manufacturing processes do I have available to me? Can I do injection molding or am I going to be turning the pen? That's going to dictate the material choice. Price point is going to be a huge one. If you're trying to sell a pen for two or three dollars, that's going to eliminate a bunch of materials and manufacturing processes and narrow it down pretty quick. There's also the question of durability. Now you might say this looks beautiful and it sure does, but you got to be a little more careful with this type of generalized plastic term that we use versus this one. This is Altum. Very, very tough plastic. This is great. You could drop this, chuck it around in your bag, and you're not going to have to really worry about this cracking unless you do something insane to it. Whoa. And uh, let's just get a little, little wild style points. This thing is pretty good. Whoa. <laughs> you know what? I'm impressed. Speaking of insane, you can watch me chuck this pen on the tile floor and it didn't suffer any damage. That's pretty extreme. A lot of pens would break under that, but this is the Paniter. They made their own resin. They wanted beautiful and shiny to compete with a lot of these other beautiful shiny materials, but then overcome that challenge where they're a little bit weak and prone to cracking. So they came up with their own unique resin in order to do that. That's pretty cool. Let's talk about metals for a minute. How how do you want the finish to be? Do you just want a plain, very sleek pen, nothing too much going on? This is straight stainless steel. It's just going to speak all for itself. Or do you want to zap it with a laser and put a cool pattern on here in an affordable way? When we're dealing with aluminum, a very cost-effective thing to do is anodize it. You got lots of color selections. It's, it's, you know, it's not going to oxidize. It's going to keep this brilliant, nice, beautiful finish. And it's quite strong. It's it's not going to scratch up and mark up so much. It has its limits, but this is a very, very cost-effective way to coat a metal pen. But you can't do this on steel, only on aluminum. There's also titanium that you can anodize. It's a different process, obviously, than the aluminum. There's a couple different methods. You can pass an electrical uh, current through here and adjust the voltage to change colors. You can do what I did. You can hit it with a flame. And then you can also do what I did is when it's still hot, you can dunk it in some acid that's got some chlorine in it and it'll give this really cool effect to it as well. It could also oxidize and hit this with a flame with the stainless steel and color it that way. But then the other option is, well, you can just paint it. You can apply a nice lacquer finish onto some pens, but then you got to make sure that you're prepping the surface material and trying to get a really, really premium finish. Sometimes you'll get some orange peel on here where the paint job isn't quite as good as if you spend a little more money on some other pens I got in the back here. So these are all metal bodied pens, okay? But they just did a premium job on applying that paint. And all that has to be factored into the right price point. So we want durability, cool looking, and also get the price point in the right spot. So you gotta take all that stuff into consideration when you're thinking about your materials and thus also your coating. So let's say we have a very cool looking pen with a nice capping mechanism, nice coating, all that sort of stuff. Another category I think about is just the overall comfort of a pen and sort of the user experience. Is it nicely balanced? Yep, if it's really unbalanced, that can sort of throw the pen off. Does it still stay, stay balanced when it's posted? Something to think about. But there's that comfort and for some pens they can look absolutely beautiful but depending on your hand and all that type of stuff the grip section can be way too slick and then you just it doesn't work for you so you have this beautiful pen that just sits there because the grip section maybe it's that angle that taper nothing at the end to help slope it up or it's too narrow for your hand or it's just too slick that can render a great nib with a cool looking pen, nice coating, but it can render it sort of just sitting in that pen case and it only gets used every now and then. And that's a tough thing to fix without 
sort of like a bit of a hokey fix. Yes, I could put tape on here, but that's a little ridiculous. So with most, we'll just say plastic pens, which is a massive term that covers so many things. It's a little ridiculous, but for most of these pens, just the material itself, you get a nicer grip with it. It's just, it's less slick. You can sometimes do things to improve the shape a little, but most plastics, regardless of what it is, you don't really have to worry too much about grip, but you do have to consider things like step down and that to ensure that even though you have a grippiness on the material, it's gonna be comfortable for all users. I showed the Lamy 2000 earlier. I think this pen is fantastic, but again, um, the section here that just might not work for you. And unfortunately, you can have a great nib, it seals great, all that stuff. If it doesn't work for your hand, there's no way you can fix this. With metal pens, the coating that I talked about before, that can help give that grip on that metal section. You have a nice coating that's on here, a lacquer or whatever you use. That can be the thing that fixes the grip issue. You can put grooves into your section, like on this pen here, you can see those grooves that are on there and shape it a bit to help improve that grippiness on there. You can also have little micro grooves in the finish, just the overall uh, finish on the machine when it comes by, that can be enough to give a little bit more grip so it's not so slick. Another thing to go with like the overall user experience, uh, like I said, the grip, but then there's just the overall balance. So we have a lightweight pen, but then we have a metal cap. How is it if I post it? Does it post? And does it post deeply and securely? And for this pen, yeah, it's pretty good. Like it, the distribution of the weight, the way it fits on there, posting this pen, even though it has a metal cap, you think that might unbalance it, but they did a good job on that and it posts nice and secure. Some pens are plenty big that you just, you don't need to cap them, you know, to post them, I should say, so it's gonna fall off, but you say, go, okay, well, it doesn't post. Well, it's big enough, and then uh, it's light, and it's balanced nicely, so it's good how it is. And then there are some that are just really, really lovely pens. Everything's great about it, but you just have a bit of a larger hand, and it would just be nice. You just pop the cap on, and it goes on nice and secure, but alas, it keeps falling off. So those are little things I look at. That's tough to fix. Uh, I could file things or just figure that out, but that would have been so much easier in the initial step if they really just checked on that. You also need to think of the user experience. What are they gonna do with this pen? Well, if you put a cartridge, say in this pen here, great, no problems. You can see the ink level on there. That's really, really nice. But what if you go with the converter and you wanna do it that way and bottle fill it? Well, now you get ink down in there and it pools in here and it's a little bit of a pain to clean it out. And if you don't clean it out, you can end up getting some ink on your fingers. I love my Mont Blanc M. It writes wonderfully. It's got the micro grooves for that metal section, but you know what? Just the way these are designed, they kind of do hold the ink a little bit more. And I just have to give this one a few more wipes compared to some other metal section pens I have that have grooves. They're easier to clean off. After you've inked the pen and have used it, you got to clean it out too. So most pens are fairly easy to clean. If you take a cartridge converter pen, you just pop it out. You all know the cleaning procedure. And uh, it's pretty easy to clean any type of cartridge converter pen. Most piston pens are not too bad. My Mont Blanc here, this thing's, you know, of all the piston pens I have, this one's the easiest to clean. It just, it really gets the ink out and replenishes it with water and not much extra ink sticks around. This is probably the easiest piston filler I have to clean. And I don't even have to take the pen apart. Some, you know, to really get all that stuff out, but as a demonstrator, yeah, you, you take the pen apart. Some vac fillers are a challenge. And then there's other ones. Like on this Lamy Dialogue 3, it's a little more involved. You gotta take the pen out, take this out. It's Again, it's not too, too bad. They have the ink window in here, but then that kind of also messes up if I wanna use a bulb syringe and put the bulb syringe in here to sort of blast the ink out quicker. I kind of have to cover this, seal it a bit, get the bulb syringe in and the ink, you know, the water's kind of spraying. It's a little more cumbersome to clean it. I can just stick to the converter method and just pull it in and out, in and out, in and out. But that does take quite a bit longer. So little details like that, you can think and just go, well, how is this person gonna clean the pen? Are we making it easy or are we making it complicated? Now we're going on to assembly. You gotta put the pen together. It's made of all different bits. Some are metal, plastic, injection molded, turned. All oh, you got all sorts of different things you gotta deal with. And you know, some pens have pen uh, clips here. They have finials, they'll have little collars, there'll be, you know, liners, all that sort of stuff. You got to put this thing together and make sure it's put together uh, very well. Nothing falls off or, or snaps or whatever. You're not putting stresses in certain areas. You're using proper 
techniques if you use any adhesives. Back to this pen, they didn't prep this cap band and it, it fell off and I checked it. They didn't properly prep, you know, adhesives and surfaces for it to bond properly. Then other pens will go, we'll make that super tough resin. And then as far as assembly, we don't want to use glue. We're going to do this glueless. So they, you know, designed all the parts so it fits together. And maybe there's a little tangs on things to have little teeth. So it grabs on there too. They're tight friction fits, good machining tolerances. And the whole thing goes together. Don't have to worry about adhesives because you just eliminate the whole thing. And all those little bands and rings, like I said, it's a real noticeable thing if they don't line up or there's sharp edges or burrs. This Pilot A23, they do a perfect job on that. This one here, this is uh, not the real Dolce Vita. This was made by Marta Modena. It's not too bad, but there's little things like now the cap band spins. Uh, it's off a little bit. Not, th not the end of the world. It doesn't impact the, the pen, but it's off a bit. And you can see also, too, we got a coating on here that sort of came off. This was laser etched, laser engraved, and it's got some burrs on it. So that should have been caught because what those burrs did is they put, where is it on my 23? There's a nice scratch on the body here. I think it's on the cap. There it is. Put that nice little scratch because they were, they were case buddies. And uh, Marta Modena scratched my A23. So that was kind of annoying. And you can have little rings like this where you're very, very close. If we can get a focus, you can see. But just on the edge, you rotate it around. We're off a little bit. And now you got a bit of an edge or if you're getting very elaborate on here and you have the skeleton that goes over top this is tough to do to get it on here because now you got clear and how are you going to assemble this without scratching this all to hell because these are sort of sharp edges on here that's a tough thing to do put that all together and you can be real real close but you can have just the tiniest of edges and you're going to notice it. When this pen is assembled, how are you going to do it? Are all the parts designed that they can just get put on by hand and they just go on, on, press, press, maybe a quick little tool, it's all done by hand, or are you going to go through and be meticulous and have all sorts of little fixtures and mini presses and tools and jigs and things goes in and everything aligns so everything's self-aligning and you or there's uh, parts or features that are keyed to ensure that things go in only one direction and everything's perfectly aligned properly seated not too much force was used but just the right amount if you watch the apple boom video on pelican they do a uh, tour of the factory and when i watched that video my eyes were all over the little assembly jigs and tooling that was on the desks and uh, the benches i watched them put it together and that was extremely satisfying for me because I see these parts get pressed in and everything's aligned and everything is just so to eliminate those little tiny flaws that can happen. Really cool pen for just overall assembly is this Muji pen. When you look at this one real close, you start to realize how it goes together, how it's made. It's all really just a bunch of tubes. That's really all this pen is. We have a big tube here for the main body of the pen but this, these threads here, this is not the same material. You can even see there's a tiny little gap. I got my feeler gauge out. Here, let me get it out and show you. Okay, here we go. That's so tough to do and get it on camera. But I can fit that feeler gauge in behind there. That is because these are two parts. So all this is going to be is just a long length of uh, tubing that has that thread cut on the inside. And then that's just going to get parted off to size. So just a whole bit of these parts just get made very quickly and very cost efficiently. And then just get pressed inside of this tube. And then if we look down on the other side, the finial in there, that is just press fit in from the other side. So it's another part that's just going to be, you know, machine and cut to the right size. So you can just press it in there. You have a bunch of jigs, whether it's fully automated or you have workers at stations with custom little press jigs, pop, pop, pop. The parts go together super, super easy. No adhesives. Now, if we look down in the section, you can see we have another tube here that accepts the nib and feed and the housing and all that. And if we look down on the inside, it looks like we got threads down there. So here again, we just have another tube. This one will have a nice little thread at the end. They go together maybe to uh, prevent this from coming out. There could be a little bit of Loctite in there. And so because of the way that this pen was made, we start off with tubes. We're not really removing much material. We're, uh, you know, we're speeding things up. There's no chips being generated, all that sort of stuff. Because you got to pay per, per uh, pound, well, really per ton for your material. 
And if all the stuff is gone that you don't need, that's going to save you money and you can deliver a pretty well-built pen at a, uh, what I figure is a pretty reasonable price. So let's say you did all the right things. You have a cap that's going to protect. It's also going to seal. You pick the right material, the right coatings, the right assembly method. The grip is good. The pen posts. It's going to, you know, just do its job. It's easy to fill it up with ink. It's easy to clean. All those great things. Now it's time for that final check before it goes out the door to spot any flaws in any of the manufacturing processes, assembly processes, anything. Because you want to make sure you deliver a product. The user gets it, they take it out, and they put ink in it, and it writes. Part of that QC, of course, is checking the nib, making sure it's going to write. You want to be able to get the pen out of the box, put ink in it, it writes, and it meets your expectations. Lamy's famous for dipping their nibs. And given it a quick test write, you can spot some little leftover blue as part of their QC procedure. That works. It's a good way to do it. It's not going to catch every every little thing, but it's a, it's a very good effort. Some other ones, I've heard they've improved now. But in the past, maybe that step wasn't as good as it should be. Um, fortunately, you can fix it. It is easier to fix, like I said, a nib versus if there's a really bad design feature where a pen is just going to have trouble working or it's impossible to clean or whatever. Um, but you can have a very high-end, gorgeous, gorgeous pen. That little final check there can drive you absolutely nuts. But then you can get really affordable pens for five bucks. There's a few things that are off. You got some sharp edges. You know, it caps, it seals good, but it scratches it up. There's little things like that. But man, you just put ink in it, put the nib down, it writes, it seals, and for five bucks, you're like, why can't all nibs write like that out of the box? And so some go another step further. Like I've talked about Gravitas a few times because he does a lot of the stuff just for one person all on his own. You can be neurotic and check every single nib that comes out. And again, you cannot be 100%. Something might slip by every now and then, but I haven't seen it yet, and it's pretty damn rare. If you check every single pen under a microscope, that is sort of the ultimate way. That does cost, but it doesn't have to cost too much, apparently. So after all of that, that mentally for me happens all within maybe a minute of holding the pen. I check it out and go, wow, that looks absolutely gorgeous. Look at that. And I appreciate it. And then I immediately start thinking about it and run it through all those paces. And that really, for me at least, coming from an engineering background, helps me figure, is this a good pen? Do I like what they've done with it? And the little design challenges that come up, whether it's with the materials, manufacturing capabilities or limitations, all those types of factors I think about when I try to deconstruct and then reconstruct the pen to determine, did they do a good job? Are there some tiny little mistakes hidden in there? And how will that impact the usability and longevity of a pen? I think I went deep enough. I go way deeper in my own time. It, the video could just go on forever, but we'll wrap it up there. I hope that helped you a little bit just to gain a little perspective of someone with an engineering background. The way we think and the way we look at things might be a little different than the average person out there. We'll leave it there. Hit subscribe if you enjoy videos like this. Hit some comments and we will catch you next time.